Hi, you've tuned in to Gil and Ahemia, Sacred Erotic Poetry and Sacred Sexuality and Ascension. And um, I am really happy to be here. Today is March 19th, a couple of days after the full moon, the equinox is tomorrow. So I thought it was just prime time to come on as I said I would. Um, I uh, believe this will be a weekly uh, podcast and um, probably I'll be recording on Saturdays. That's my um, quiet day, and I just wanted to um, begin by taking three deep breaths and setting an intention for this um, for this episode. So if you'd like to do that with me, please close your eyes. If you're driving, um, please go to the side if you'd like to, or do it later. So let's close our eyes together and take three deep breaths. Um, we'll hold for three and release for three. We're calling in Holy Mother, Holy Father, our guides, our starseed origins in Lemuria, in um, any far off places, the Palladians, the um, Andromedans, any, the Blu-ray, the Lyrans, um, any, anything that you connect to that really brings you peace, uh, the animals, the planets, the jungle, the trees, the core of Gaia, the sky, the clouds, the moon, Um, Please connect to that right now. We're calling that in to assist us, the shaman energy of uh, really sitting in nature to uh, guide us and to show us our next steps in this new chapter of our lives. Um, Calling in our ancestors, calling in our archangels, God, source, universe, calling in our hearts to connect together in oneness with the infinite oneness and um, moving into deep, deep flow, surrender, and trust. Uh, Aho, and so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Thank you for being here. Thank you for those of you that tuned in to my last episodes of um, a long time of not being uh, present. And um, I wanted to really concentrate today on... um, a couple of different ideas were coming to me this morning of art of releasing, of opening the new chapter, of really stepping into our truth in full honesty and authenticity. And I know these are themes I've discussed in the past, though I feel that um, the combination of them are really coming to play at this time. And, you know, as I looked at the full moon on the 17th, um, I didn't even realize it, like it just felt like it it uh, crept up behind me. Some of you might have felt that way too. It's the full moon in Virgo um, that just passed. Um, We're still in that energy. Um, It's the last couple of days and we're moving into the equinox, the spring equinox. So spring is here uh, for those of us on the um, northern hemisphere, for the southern hemisphere. it is uh, another season, <laughs> and um, but it is a time of equality, right? It is a time where day and night is actually equal and the light is going to be prevailing. And I feel like that is just definitely opening up a new chapter as it um, is so close to the full moon in Virgo. Um, and um, for me, especially, I've been feeling like the light is shining in on those places and spaces that I've kept hidden um, from working on at the moment. Uh, So much has happened, as I said in my earlier podcast, um, in my life, in uh, the lives around me, in the collective energy. And I feel that um, there's more to uncover, right? There's more to open up to. There's more love and joy to experience. And there's more truth and honesty to truly heal and be healed from as well as to step into more of those shadow energy and I wanted to I wanted to touch on that today because um, as I said in my last episode you know the more that we can sit with the energy that's coming up even if it's uncomfortable and 
look at it for what we've learned. Um, you know, I think it's a good time to reassess. Usually in full moons, we're doing release statements where we may be burning um, release statements that we're writing. I used to do that for a long time. I probably will do it today. Um, and um, and just to let go of that energy so that you can open up into the new. And it's it's so... I feel like it's so much more potent now with this equinox and I just like it's, you know, other clients of mine were just like opening up new chapters, opening up new businesses, opening, seeing more opportunities of things that we've been desiring for a long time coming to fruition. Um, and, you know, it may have been happening all along, you know, maybe on the sidelines, but now it's like in full force. Um, and it's like, what do you decide to do? You know, where, where, um, where are your intentions and how, you know, I think the biggest thing that has been happening for me that may be happening for you too, like how an old pattern, being aware of it and deciding, okay, I don't want to respond in that way. I don't really know how to respond. Um, so let me look at, you know, what is, be present with what is and allow in inequality to whatever comes through with another person on your own. You know, like I think that Sometimes, you know, we, when we are making our decisions, we make them for ourselves and sometimes we don't fully connect or communicate with others. I know that's something that I've done. I usually like make my decision and I just go my own way, you know, instead of maybe talking it through. And this is true of many things in my life, of my relationships, of my career changes, uh, even sometimes, you know, with my uh, friends and children, you know, like uh, even with my finances, you know, it's like kind of a, this is it, this is the way I'm going, you know, and no, and no discussion, you know, but I feel like this is a different type of energy. This is an energy of communication. This is an em energy of um uh, bi-directional language. This is an energy of openness. You know, this is an energy of not knowing, of feeling uncertain and sit, really sitting in that uncertainty. You know, that our last one was surrendering, right? So when we could surrender to what is, and we know what our vision is too, and we, we know that we're still, you know, there's some kind of, um, passageway we need to go through, or there's still something, um, left to experience. I don't know how to say that. I'm not, I'm not saying that we're not there yet because that means we're always there, right? We're, when we're in the present moment, we're always there. It's just that um, there may be something that is still eluding us and perhaps my um, what I felt this morning was perhaps it's just that I haven't allowed myself to see the full picture or I haven't allowed myself to um, to fully open to all possibilities, or maybe this is just what it is. And I need to accept it for what it is and just allow it to unfold in its own time. You know, and I think that there's that, that, uh, idea of impatience. You know, my son is also, he's been telling me I'm impatient. I'm impatient for something that he's expecting. And, um, you know, and it's just the practice of patience, the practice of like, you know, I've seen so many things happen to me where I just had to be patient, even if I had other feelings and I was like, you know, um, grasping at straws at times, you know, I allowed myself to just be patient with what is because there's nothing I could do, right? You know, I do all that I can and then I just let, have to let it go and just let the pieces fall where they may. And um, and they're, they're always going to fall beautifully uh, because when we're in full acceptance of what is, you know, they just do. And, you know, the, the really big important thing as well is this ending of an, of an old chapter, ending of a chapter of victimhood and ending of a chapter of like, you know, I, I noticed yesterday, like, um, that I was like in a similar situation I would have been in years ago, you know, like at a dance party and it was fun and it was exciting. Yet I wasn't responding the same way because it was much more centered and grounded, you know, and there may be some feelings of grief. And I wanted to share a poem that I just wrote this morning um, that, you know, our, our sadness for ending a chapter as well as the openness for beginning a new one. It's it's not yet finished, but I thought I'd just share it as it's coming out for some of you who, you know, who are thinking, oh, I'm, I'm a poet too, and I don't, I don't know how to share my stuff. Sometimes just sharing as you're writing could be really, really powerful. So I wanted to do that with you today. Sadness overwhelms me as a chapter ends and a new one begins. Uncertain of the waters that coalesce around me, 
The waves might crash or may be calm. I welcome the change as I stand steadfast and firm with the currents. My worth immutable, my self-love deep, and my tears overflowing. So um, there is an element of sadness and, um, and there's also this element of just, you know, really letting it go and being strong as because of what I was picturing. Um, I don't know if you got this visual, but I was picturing a tree really just like the roots are strong. It may be moving with the winds um, and maybe even the currents, you know, if it's like near a body of water and um, and yet it's still standing firm in and of itself, you know, and I feel that is a the theme of sovereignty. You know, we're sovereign beings, we're, we're moving with what's going on, we're aware, we're present, and yet we're fully um, determined and committed to our visions. And our visions are solid, are, they're on firm ground. And I feel like that is really the shift. Um, you know, I feel like there, I, I know I've said so many times, there's a new chapter coming, there's a new chapter coming, but you know what? This chapter is rooted in the truth. This chapter is rooted with our very being into the core of Mother Gaia, into the core of the infinite oneness that is both grounded in earth and connected to the sky. You know, which is why the tree imagery is really important in this one. And, you know, like as any season where the leaves um, fall and then they grow back, you know, our tears might be coming down. We may be feeling that uh, feeling of like grief of like, okay, something has left me, but something new is emerging, which is so appropriate to spring, right? You know, we're, we have maybe... Um, uh, sown some seeds in the fertile ground that they may be shooting up uh, to see some roots. I mean, to see some uh, sprouts and that as the roots are firming up. Or we may just be like sitting in the darkness, not sure of what's next, but knowing that we are completely held, loved, and um, cared for. You know, because I, I think I've said, you know, I write gratitude every single day, every morning, every night. I say it in the middle of the day. And, you know, even I say to my, I said to myself today, you know, I don't know. There's some hopes and dreams I have that I haven't yet seen, but I know that they're coming in the best possible way. You know, and I, and I affirm that to myself um, because because I know that to be true, because so many things have, have wonderful things have happened, and I know that they're continuing to happen. And even if I feel some sadness, even if I feel that like, you know, movement as we're moving from one dimension to the next, next, and we feel that kind of jarring, you know, like you're in a car and you're moving from one gear to the next, or you're suddenly accelerating, you know, you feel the shift, but you know, you're moving with it because you're like determined to go there. Um, and, um, and it's, it's not like, it doesn't take a lot of effort, you know, but it takes a lot of trust. As I was sitting there looking at the moon last night, it was actually really beautiful. There was a fire and it was like slightly raining. And then we had, um, some moments where we're seeing the clear blue sky, um, with the, with the full moon, you know, um, so it was like, it was just a really mix of weather and, and we had the warmth of the fire and it was just like, it felt otherworldly, you know, it felt like, whoa, you know, this is just really a really beautiful beginning to something that is still not illuminated yet, you know, and, um, and I want to stress that, that something might not still be illuminated in your life. And I, I want, I'm inviting you to look into, you know, the possibilities of what could be. And not with not any attachment, you know, it could be a relationship, it could be a career change, it could be, um, you know, like a, a mission shift, you know, it could be anything, it could be starting a new recipe, you know, <laughs> right, you know, it's like, we're not sure how it's going to turn out, you know, especially with food, like, um, I made bruschetta yesterday. And I was looking at, I had been thinking about this for a while, you know, and I, and I just had, didn't get the ingredients. I don't know. I had fresh basil. I had all, everything available. And it was great. You know, I had the balsamic vinegar and I remembered how much I loved it. And um, it just, it, it was 
it was made with love and it was made with full intention. And I think that's all we ever really need. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in the story of, you know, the things that aren't working for us or the things that are making us upset. And those need to be addressed. You know, those need to be seen and heard just like anything else. You know, never, I would always say just like, I don't put stuff under the covers. You know, I feel them. I feel them with my full, you know, with my full body. And I acknowledge them. And I'm like, okay, this isn't working for me. You know, what What can I do to help myself, to love myself more, to be more in my truth, to express myself better, to communicate and be honest with me before I be, I'm being honest with someone else, you know? How do I express my needs better? It's a constant, for me, it's a constant, um, it's constant work to communicate effectively, either in my art um, or in my, um, in my job, you know, in my, in my daily communications with people, in my, um, in anything I do, right? In my being, in my communication with my animals, you know, how, how do I talk to them? How do I be consistent with them? You know, how do I take care of them? And I wanted to also talk about art, you know, again, these are a lot of different ideas coming together and that's probably how most of these are going to be, <laughs> but I really feel like, Sometimes, you know, the answers, I used to love uh, reading other people's cards, you know, and I used to love reading cards. I don't have that many decks, but, you know, I would just look for messages that I need to know. And I realized, you know what, the information, the creativity, the wisdom is within us, and it can be through our art form. Sometimes the communication can be so deep that it can't yet be shared through speech, right? It goes so deep that it has to be shared through art, through music, through writing, through pictures, through, um, you know, feelings and, um, and journaling and, you know, cooking, the creative part of ourselves, you know, that's part of being, um, to me, sexual. It's being like creative with yourself, with your partner, with your clothes, with who you are and connecting into that space too, you know, right? It's not just about our our feelings towards like energy and God. It's our feelings towards ourselves, towards our body. It's connecting to that deep creative force in our sacral chakra and allowing that to unfold. It's, and it's rooting that and, um, you know, into the ground because it's so earthly. It's so like, you know, so there. It's, it's like a really strong feeling. It can move mountains when we just feel good. You know, even if it's we're on our own, we're with another, we're with others. You know, that feeling of love, that feeling of, um, it can even just be touch. You know, it doesn't have to always be sexual. It could be like a hug. You know, it could be a deep, um, you know, connection with the body that is just like a deep energy between two people, regardless of gender. You know, it's um, this this physical feeling is necessary for our wholeness, you know, because we aren't just living in our minds. Much of our life is in our minds, but we need to know and connect to our body. Our body's always speaking to us, right? We have pain. We have pleasure. We have to rest. We have to, you know, cleanse ourselves. We have to eat. You know, all of these things are very physical. And how do we connect into that space and still, you know, be whole and not compartmentalize it? You know, I feel like there's still that element, um, you know, even in my own mind sometimes of compartmentalizing it. But as I'm aware of it, I open up to the new. I open up to the feeling of, you know, the multidimensionality and the oneness of it and the wholeness of it. Um, so it, sometimes all it needs is awareness that that is what we're doing. And, and that may or may not be how we want to continue to do it anymore. You know, we're just really being open to our feelings, to our body, to our sensual desires, our um, our focus on our own creativity and our spirituality. It's like all coming together. You know, that's why I think like nature is so important, being in nature, just even if it's just 15 minutes of your day um, uh, where you're outside or you're just, you know, looking at the trees, you know, just like being 
um, and feeling your body, it's, it's just so important to just like feel and be present and open up to that creativity. And that creativity can have many forms, you know, so open up to whatever that means. Maybe you want to sing at that moment. Maybe you want to write, create music, have an idea, you know, um, I think that this new energy, this, um, you know, I, I feel like this equinox is asking us to really open up to equality in relationships with ourselves, with the divine, with our own bodies, with our spirituality, like balance, you know, it's, it's, the sixth year, right? Two, two, two equals six. And it's this balance, balance with everything, you know, because that connects us into the oneness, balance with our own honesty and balance with our own feelings, as I shared in my poem of sadness and newness, you know, I'm like, and maybe it feels imbalanced at the moment as the tears are flowing, but the next minute as those tears are released, it opens up into something new, you know, it opens up into um, an acceptance of what is that feeling and allowing in the um, the open energy. You know, sometimes I feel like new is overused. Um, so, you know, just being open to what is and how it's unfolding, you know, because you are always guided. And I, and I feel like when we're so committed to... Um, you know, to working on ourselves, to helping others, to being kind, to um, really listening to our bodies, our emotions, our surroundings. You know, it takes a lot of effort. I talked to someone uh, just this week who is um, who is a coach as well, working with businesses. And you know what she said? It's really hard to be aware all the time. It's like, it's impossible, you know? And I, and I really felt that because I felt like, okay, yeah, you know, we're all doing an amazing job. We're doing a great job. And like, sometimes it's really hard to always be at that point and that's okay. You know, that's okay. I'm just being real. You know, I feel like this podcast is, um, it talks about a lot of ideas and, you know, it, it connects you into your creative space, connects you into your desires, into your sexuality and into your spiritual path. And I'm just really vowing to be real, you know, really real because I'm a real person. I know you're all real people and you're having real concerns, you know, real situations happening in your life that you need to move through. And how do you do that? How do you use these energies of the full moon in Virgo? <clears throat> that is an art sign and um, the equinox that's coming up, how, how can we utilize this energy to help us to resolve situations that are going on in our life, our challenges, you know, and that's, that's what this is about because without, without the um, balance, without the fullness of knowing who you are, um, knowing the depth of, of, of your um, powers and of your, experience and allowing in the wisdom from within to come through without, um, I feel that we're not fully living our authentic life if we don't do that. That is my true um, tenant or belief in, in my mission for this planet um, and for ascension for myself and for others. It's like, continuously um, reassessing when we can how to balance ourselves with all of the things that we're desiring, with all of the things that we need, for, with all of the things that we're birthing. You know, birth is not just a child. Birth is a project. Birth is a new business. Birth is a new house. Birth is a, um, is a new relationship. You know, it's all about... Um, going into the uncertainty and letting go of the old thought pattern so we can open up to the new idea, to the new create creation, creations that we're creating and collaborating together. Because until we let go of the old, we can't actually create the new, right? You know, and even if it's just pieces of the old to help to, you know, piece by piece create the new, do it however works. But that is a fact, right? You know, there's always 
when there's destruction, there's creation. There is a volcano that erupted, and there's lava all over the place. It looks like a mess, but then there's fertile ground for new growth. And it can be that dramatic, or it could be very, very, um, you know, uh, graceful and slow. So you choose what works for you. You know, if you're desiring assistance in that path, let me know. This is what I do. I, um, I assist people. I help people. I guide them into their own wisdom um, at whatever pace they want. You know, I have a group program. I have, um, you know, one-off sessions in quantum healing. And then I have my personal mentoring. Um, and then I actually have all of these free things that I do, you know, so all of these free resources. So I'm inviting you to step into it uh, more fully, to commit to it. You know, if trees really speak to you, if the, you know, Mother Gaia speaks to you, like, then emulate it. You know, see it as an example of how you can live your own life. And um, take take the downloads, take the inspiration that you get from this and other things in your life to begin to truly live from your heart space. Because that's all it takes, right? It takes a commitment and it takes the continually um, honest connection to yourself. So um, that's my message for today. I wanted to just uh, share um, a short healing. So I would like you guys to all close your eyes. We'll take a deep breath together. calling in Holy Mother, Holy Father to assist us in this transition from wherever we are into their, our full, authentic, holistic selves. We are releasing any patterns, um, opening up to the fullness of all that we are. I'm seeing this like bathing in sacred waters of of the deep blue sea, wherever you are. A full immersion into the water and allowing it to trickle down. Touch every nook and cranny of your body. Let it move into your hair. Let the herbs from the trees and the plants be submerged and the flowers into this sacred water. It is nameless. It is calm. It is either in the moonlight or in the sunlight. And it is cleansing. Allowing the hands of Jesus and Mother Mary to send their energy upon us at this time. Calling in the herbs of Rosemary, of Louisa, of Jasmine, the flower, to rejuvenate ourselves, to open up us open us up into the creativity, the sensuality of who we are, allowing us to flow with the movement of the water, to allow the waves to slowly touch our skin as it kisses us and keeps us close to all the elements. Let's take another deep breath. Blessing us with equality, blessing us with truth, blessing us with balance. 
removing any archetypes that have not been serving us, creating a celestial fire around us for warmth, allowing the modality and element of, of water, wind, and space to encompass us now. Let's take one more deep breath. Bathe in all the four elements. And let it help you to resolve any challenge that you're facing right now so that you can step in the fullness of your heart and of your soul's mission. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and so it is. Namaste, Shanti, Shalom. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening in, for allowing this healing to be received and to be blessed by each other, by our hearts, by the infinite oneness, by all of our angels. Closing this circle and this sacred transmission. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Aho, so it is. Until next time.